What's going on everybody? It's James here with RTA Outdoor Living and today we are back with another video. In this video we are going to be discussing utilities. Running utilities for your outdoor kitchen is often an area of the project that our customers have the most questions about. Running utility lines properly is something that does have a fair amount of variables but our goal with this video is to give you more clarity around the subject so that you can successfully execute on your project. Let's dive into it. Let's get started with the two most common ways to run your utilities into your outdoor kitchen. We will be focusing on ways that work with our system, but most of the things that are discussed in this video can be applied to most other outdoor kitchen systems as well. The first way is to stub your utility lines up through the footprint of your outdoor kitchen through the bottom of the patio or the surface that your outdoor kitchen is actually going on. This is going to be the most ideal way to run utilities, but it does require a little bit more planning on the front end of your project. You want to ideally trench the utility lines underneath the patio surface before the patio is actually installed. You technically can do this after the patio is in place, especially with paver patios, but it's always easier and more cost effective to actually do this on the front end. There are a few key ways to make sure you can do this effectively. Make sure to plan your outdoor kitchen before your patio gets installed. Far too many people wait until after the patio is in place to start planning and designing their outdoor kitchen, in which case it is often too late and requires far more work and money to run the utility lines in place. Have at very least a finalized outdoor kitchen design concept that you can share with your patio contractor. To start, the contractor will need to know which utility lines to run, whether it's gas, water, or electric. And also, in order to make sure the utility lines are run to the right area. They will need to know the layout so they can place the stubbed up utility lines inside the footprint of the actual layout. The other factor here is appliance placement. Your contractor will want to know where the appliances are going to be placed in the layout so they can place the utility lines in the appropriate locations. Some appliances will interfere with utility lines that are stubbed up through your patio, so you want to be careful about where they are actually placed. For example, if an electrical line is stubbed up in the middle of where your refrigerator will go, it'll be very problematic as the utility lines will interfere with the refrigerator and not allow it to sit in its place. This will cause you to move the location of either the utility line or move the location of the refrigerator. Trust us when we say that pre-planning your layout in coordination with the patio construction is critically important. The second way to run the utility lines is going to be to have them enter through a side or a back panel. This method is very common if the outdoor kitchen is going against a wall where the utility lines will be punched out through, as it is a convenient and non-visible way to get the utility lines into the structure of your outdoor kitchen. We provide standardized cutouts in our panels for islands that are going to go against the wall so that you can easily run your utility lines into the island structure. The other scenario, which is not as ideal, but can be necessary depending on your project situation. This would be to run the utility lines through a side or a back panel. This will be for scenarios where the island is freestanding, not against the wall, or where you don't have the ability to stub up the lines through your patio. There is nothing inherently wrong with this option. The only downside is that the utility lines will be exposed and visible, which is really not aesthetically pleasing for a lot of people. The one huge advantage that we have with our system at RTA is that our island structures are hollow and don't have any type of frame. This allows you to have plenty of space inside the island to run your utility lines as you please. Now we are going to go through some of the most common appliances that require utilities and explain the recommended ways to run your utility lines to each appliance. Keep in mind that we use Coyote appliances in our designs, so the information we are going to walk you through will be specific to Coyote appliances. A lot of the principles will be the same for most appliances, but things can vary, so it's always best to refer back to the manufacturer's recommendations. All Coyote gas grills come equipped with a standard regulator and a hose to be hooked up to a standard 20 pound propane tank. Because the desired length of natural gas and propane line direct connections can vary depending on the specifics of the installation, a gas line is not included and would need to be purchased separately. If you plan to use a larger propane tank, like a 250 gallon tank, to fuel your appliances, 
You may have to purchase an inline regulator separately to control the gas flow. All natural gas grills will come with the regulator. It is recommended to consult with a professional to see if an inline regulator is necessary for your situation. You can always refer to the owner's manual of the grill for more details and specifics on the connections and the parts required. Most Coyote grills come with interior halogen lighting, so if you want to be able to use the lighting feature on your grill, you will want to have an outlet close by. The grills come with a plug that comes off the left side of the grill behind the control panel. The cord is about 11 feet long and can be plugged into any standard 110 outlet. The location of this outlet would ideally sit inside the island structure underneath where the grill is going to be located so you can easily plug the cord in while having the cord not be visible. The lighting requirements for an S-Series grill are a bit different as Coyote's S-Series grills do come with a rotisserie attachment. You would still have the interior lighting on the S-Series, so it is recommended to have two outlets. One that is located inside the structure of the island to power the interior grill lights, and one outlet that is located outside the island structure that you can plug your rotisserie into. The rotisserie cord is only about 34 inches long, so it is best to have that outlet close by to avoid having to run an extension cord. Four of the most common locations for the outlet for your rotisserie are, one, a pop-up countertop outlet. If you have some counter space available, you can locate a pop-up outlet to the left of the grill towards the back of the countertop to easily be able to plug your rotisserie into. There are some additional costs incurred in purchasing the outlets and a fee to make the cutout in the countertop, but this is a great option for some of our customers. Two, an outlet on the back or front panel. It can be easiest to add an outlet on the back panel as you typically aren't restricted on space. The front panel is a more convenient location, but there is not always room on the front of your panel due to the appliance placement. Three, an outlet on the side panel. This is a great option if your grill is going to be located at the end of your island. Since the motor can be flipped from left to right, if you incorporate an outlet into the side of the island structure, you can simply plug the rotisserie into that outlet. Four, an outlet on a back wall. This is a great option if your island is going to be up against a wall in the back. You can have an outlet mounted on the wall in the back that can be used to plug your rotisserie into. If running an outlet for your rotisserie cord is not an option, you can always use an extension cord as a last resort, but we would not recommend doing this and avoid it at all costs. Coyote refrigerators come with a cord that is about four and a half feet long and comes equipped with a three prong plug. The refrigerator can be plugged into a standard electrical outlet with a three prong ground. It is highly recommended that you don't use an extension cord for the refrigerator, but if you do, a heavy duty appliance rated extension cord that is rated for 220 volts and 15 amps is required. The best location for the outlet for your refrigerator is going to be located directly behind the refrigerator to the left or the right, so that it's in range for the four and a half foot cord to actually reach. Pellet grills are different from gas grills and would require electricity to function. All Coyote pellet grills are rated for a 120 volt grounded plug. This outlet would ideally be located inside the island structure so that the electrical cord is not visible. Coyote side burners and the power burner are going to have a very similar requirement as the gas grills. You can refer to the owner's manual for each appliance for more details. None of the Coyote burners require any power to function. There are two types of warming drawers that Coyote offers. One is a warming drawer that is all by itself, and the other is a warming drawer that is incorporated into a combination drawer. Both do require power to function, but the requirements for each are a bit different. Let's start with the standalone warming drawer. This appliance doesn't come with a power cord and must be hardwired using a permanent wiring system that can be purchased separately. Once the appliance is hardwired, you can plug it into a standard 120 volt outlet. The warming drawer that is built into the combination drawer already does have an electrical cord that is ready to be plugged into a standard 120 volt outlet. Having external outlets on your islands that can be used to charge phones, plug blenders in and such, just adds to the convenience of having an outdoor kitchen. We can incorporate cutouts for external outlets into our panels during our manufacturing process. 
When working with your designer, they can guide you on the standard locations that these outlets can be placed into your design. We don't provide the outlets themselves as you would still have to purchase the outlet, but we would make the cutout and incorporate a junction box so you can easily have the outlets wired and installed by an electrician. We provide all of our customers with a utility guide and final plans that they can easily share with their contractors. We hope this video helps you as you are planning your outdoor kitchen project. Don't make the common mistakes we see customers make and wait until it's too late to actually start planning. Running utility lines can be a costly part of the project to make mistakes on. That is why planning ahead of time is the best way to ensure success. One of the beautiful things about working with us is we will provide you with all of the necessary resources to make sure the planning and execution of your project is smooth and easy. We always recommend consulting a licensed professional when running gas, water, or electrical lines. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with all of the value that we provide. We would love the opportunity to assist you in enhancing your grilling experience. Once again, I'm James with RTA Outdoor Living, and we'll see you on the next video.